Welcome to Tuesday Talks. We realize that life is hard. We all have questions that we wouldn't even think about asking out loud. The comforting thing is, you're not alone. We're all asking them. That's what this podcast is for. Each week, we're going to talk about hard questions and painful points in life. We won't shy away from anything. If you've thought it, we're going to talk about it so you feel seen and understood. Join us for our conversation this week on Tuesday Talks. Welcome, everyone, to another week of Tuesday Talks. Thank you so much for joining us. I've got uh, Corinne and Shane back. Uh, we had Corinne last week, and uh, Shane, you're a newbie. so uh, First time. Yeah. Thanks for being on. Uh, would love for you to just introduce yourself, tell everyone what you do here at Long Hollow and all those good things. Uh, my name is Shane Sisk. I have been at Long Hollow for 13 years. I, I do... a I do a lot of. I'm not even sure what my title is now. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. I I, I work. I, one of my focuses right now is with parents. So I st- I still work with students, but I I get to work with parents. So I think that would be kind of my focus right now. Sweet. Well, uh, just to as we continue to work through all of our different staff members and team members, uh, we have three items that encompass us as a person. Um, so Shane, I'm gonna let you go first, and then I'll go after you. Okay, uh, so my three items, and this is, I, I didn't actually realize we were supposed to bring stuff in uh, <laughs> until today. So the first is a, a picture of my family, uh, very, very much uh, family oriented, which, by the way, the uh, I was told I could not use my Bible because uh, the Bible was assumed. Uh, and so <laughs> that's slightly out of context, so, but no, also no, no. what I said. <laughs> so I, I brought my Bible, he told me no. Um, <laughs> But so the first one is uh, my family. I uh, love family. Love my wife is an am- amazing at creating memories, and, and so I, I just love it. And so whether it's watching our kids play sports or doing things with them, uh, I think that was uh, one thing. My second thing uh, is um, it's it's books in general. I am not a reader, mm-hmm. and I am trying so hard to be a reader, and um, and so I was challenged by John Acuff uh, in, a, in a program that he does to read 10 pages a day. And so I'm doing that, and, and one of the books I'm reading is actually a John Acuff book called Finish. And so I, I do a great job at starting things, uh, but not a great job at finishing. Mm. Um, and so um, I want to be a reader. So when I think of what encompasses me, I want to be a reader and I want to be a learner. And, and so that was that was the next thing that I picked. And then the third thing... Uh, this little frog uh, <laughs> is uh, it's actually from uh, student leadership university and the premise of the frog is um, to uh, eat the big frog first and it talks about how we deal with challenges uh, and to take on the toughest task first and then everything else is mm. easier but uh, it also represents for me um, uh, discipleship it also represents for me just student leadership university is about creating leaders and students uh, and so then I just started thinking about one of the things that encompasses me is I love discipleship. I love pouring into students. I love pouring into uh, student pastors. Um, I, I love th- th- our interns here. Uh, I enjoy those things. And so th- that's what the, the frog represents. Mm. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm kind of, I feel like I should have gone first now because your things are way deeper than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's okay. Um, so I'll start with my hat here. Um, so if you can see, this is a old school uh, Vancouver Grizzlies uh, hat. Uh, the Grizzlies is an NBA team that moved to Memphis, which is where I grew up um, and where my life just happened. Um, and so lived in Memphis for 20, 21 years. Um, and I'm also, this is kind of a twofer two for one, uh, because it is, uh, represents Memphis, but it also just re- represents sports. Um, I love watching and playing sports. I almost brought a shin guard cause I was like, cause I'll pick up any sport. I'm down to, to play anything at least once. Um, <laughs> except maybe softball because when you strike out and slow pitch softball twice, you just should stop. And I have done that. Um, so oh my God, really? 
It, we don't have to talk. I, <laughs> you know, maybe too much. I broke my finger from softball and it's still messed up. <laughs> yeah. Wait a second. She broke her finger. You struck out twice in slow pitch softball. <laughs> yeah, but in the same season, I hit two home runs. Okay, so it was it, it was like liver die. Balance yeah. balances out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and so, um, but I, I love sports. I love um, the camaraderie of sports, whether that's playing or watching. Um, so yeah, so Memphis in sports. Um, then I've got the box for my headset for uh, Xbox. Um, uh, Xbox is really where I have found um, to really connect with guys back from back at home um, in Memphis. It's really the only way I can talk to them. Just we all have busy schedules. Um, but then uh, friends that I'm making up here, um, shout out to the Hill, uh, Stephen, Zach, and Grant. Um, and uh, it's it's a good time. Transformed a room. Is that uh, is that a gang? No. Gosh, no. Okay. No, 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 no. A game room. It's a game, game room. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's also Steven's office where he works, but uh, <laughs> it is where all of our TVs and Xboxes are currently set up. Um, so, and then the last thing is my coffee cup here. Um, I do love coffee. Uh, when I go places, um, this represents coffee and food. When I go to a new city, it's like, what's the coffee shop? Um, and then what's good food? Like, I'm on Yelp. Um, any anytime traveling is coming up, it's like, all right, what food am I feeling? This is it. All right. Like we were in St. Louis with Will last weekend or two weekends ago. And I was looking up coffee shops and, and food, trying to see what the locals say. Um, because so, I don't so here in Hendersonville, what is your coffee mm-hmm. and what is your food? Oh man. Uh coffee I there's not anything good in Hendersonville. <laughs> uh, wow. Not, not in. Comp- now, I will say, I will say, it, it is coming. Is this going on the podcast? It is. Uh, but I, I need to back I up. I am nervous. I, I need to back up. Let me, let me back up. I thought that was a softball. That, <laughs> you just um, <laughs> the. So we're Nowhere. opening. We're, <laughs> so we're we're gonna have a coffee shop here at Long Hollow soon, and the the roast that we're gonna have is actually like one of my favorites I've ever had. Um, so I guess inadvertently, Black Press. Um, Black Press is the the coffee. Um, oh, I just realized I work at a place with a coffee shop, so I guess I should have said that. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting fired. Um, yeah. So if you come to Hendersonville, go to Hendersonville Produce. Go to the coffee shop there. Um, so he just forgot all the good places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'm, like a lot of coffee around here. I yeah. don't have a favorite, but yeah, I mean, I don't hate. I'm not yeah. a coffee drinker, and I, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're used to asking the questions. Yeah, not getting the questions thrown. Yeah. <laughs> but we can disagree, and we're going to talk about that. Oh, so, like, good segue. I like it, yes. Corinne, with the transition. So, Corinne, I disagree with my friend. I disagree with you <laughs> about coffee and Shane because Shane thinks that coffee is bad. Um, so, I disagree. That is, that is not a true statement. I believe people who all they do is talk about coffee <laughs> is bad. I don't think coffee's At bad. Jonathan I, I, Simon. I think no, no, no. There's a lot more. On our student staff, <laughs> but but I do not. I, there's nothing. I have nothing against coffee, but it's coffee drinkers who all they want to do is talk about their coffee. <laughs> okay, so I disagree with that. <laughs> so what do I do? <laughs> because that is the question we are tackling today. So go ahead. <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I I'm excited about this topic. I think. Um, I think one of the things Christians do horribly is disagree. Mm. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this today. And just, just for example, you know, one of the things, um, one of the things I've done here at Long Hollow is, is discipleship groups. And it is amazing to me, and I don't know why, but it's more girls than guys. But I'll get a D group set up, and, man, they're rocking and rolling. And all of a sudden, two girls in the D group get mad at each other, and then the D group breaks up. And, and and that's just I think that's just one example, but I so that's one of the reasons I'm excited about talking about disagreement, and talking about how we should deal with each other. Mm. So, Corinne, what is your response? I feel like so honesty. I'll always be honest. I'm not like oh well, if I'm being honest, I am. But I'll say this topic is like insert nervous sweats for me. <laughs> but at the same time, because I've learned <clears throat> through like getting uncomfortable and learning how to disagree and when to just let it go, but not in like a 
I'm letting it go, but really I'm mad. Um, but then how to like have healthy conflict. I feel like from the other side, I see the value in it and I believe in it, but I do not go into conflict feeling always very adequate at it. And I don't go, yay, I cannot wait to disagree about this. Even as Alec is like talking about the coffee, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to call everyone <laughs> in town and talk to them. And so I know that I tend to lean towards conflict is not something I feel good at. I believe that it is a good thing, but it is something that I constantly feel not super great at. Mm. I, I've never shied away from conflict. And that's, I think partly that's my personality. Uh, I think I'm an. I think you're I'm an eight. eight. I am. I. All right. Yes. All right. I think I'm an enneagram people, eight. But yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm an eight. Um, but on the enneagram, on the enneagram, yes. But I, I also I don't look to fight. I don't look to. But I've never shied away from it. Um, and so, but I think the Bible is very clear on how we should deal with conflict. I think the Bible is very clear. Uh, on on how it, that there's going to be conflict in our life, mm-hmm. and, and so I think the key is is that we need to learn how to deal with it and not shy away from it. And not and I love what you said, I, Corinne. I love the fact that you go. I know I have to do this. It's not my favorite thing, and I don't look forward to it. But there's there you know there's things in lives where we're going to conflict with people. Right. How do we deal with it? But so what level? So like I guess. Obviously, major conflict, you know, but like something like this where I'm like, I don't think really there's that great of a coffee selection in Hendersonville, something small like that. Like, is that worth working through? Is that worth doing? Like, is that do I have to do something if it's just a small conflict or can I just let it go and and not worry about it? I feel like you have to. So you may not have to do something with the person you disagree with, but you might like yourself have to like do something if that makes sense so what I'm thinking about is in the times of disagreement I feel like at least part of what I've been thinking about in this conversation is a lot of it goes back to we have to like ask God for wisdom Mm -hmm. and not go with what do we want to do whether that be I don't want to talk to this person or I want to like square up and so but actually asking like for the wisdom to go okay is this something worth talking about or if it is a smaller thing I think still addressing like even in my head being like I don't agree with this. Okay, I'm going to move on. Like, mm-hmm. that might just help so that you're not, like, growing this, like, kind of silly resentment that came from, like, a silly place, but because yeah. you didn't even acknowledge, like, I'm allowed to disagree, but I also don't have to, like, let that person know all the time. Mm. And honestly, like, Grant and I have, like, a kind of understanding that when it's, like, little things, I'm, like, ATD. Like, just agree to disagree. <laughs> I do not <laughs> see it that way, but it's not worth, like, getting like you to see my side because it's just silly and that right. helps always be like ATD cool you do you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think the thing for people like me is I have to I've got to learn to listen to other people's opinions without mm. bulldozing them um and and so what I mean by that is is it's okay for us to disagree on coffee or on certain things and you know and even even spiritual things it's okay for us to disagree with that. I need to listen, I and and I need to be able to, once I listen, I've earned the right to speak. And so a lot of times what happens is is we throw our opinions out there, and, mm-hmm. and Enneagram 8s are bad about this. We throw our opinions out there, and then we're like, all right, deal with it. And we, <laughs> and we, and we walk away instead of going, oh, tell me what you think. And then, But then it's okay to go, okay, you like this, I like this. We can still be friends. Yes. But it's also like, you know, we live in a culture where your, you know, your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. So like, how come these truths can't like that conflict that happens there, which is kind of different, but still the same of like, how do I go about being friends with someone that I disagree with on, um, it could be politically or it could be, you know, spiritually and, and theologically, like how am I able to be friends with someone that I'm kind of in a constant conflict with? Does that question make sense? Yeah. It, do you want to take that? Or <laughs> I, I think I think the the simple answer is this: to understand that as believers in Jesus Christ, our job is to love one another. Mm. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to agree with one another, um, and so we can have different opinions on things. And we can disagree on things, but that doesn't mean that that shuts down all communication. That doesn't mean 
And that may mean sometimes we go, hey, let's avoid politics. Yeah. Hey, let's avoid, you know, hey, if this is, if I know something's a trigger for you, you know, let, I, why don't I avoid that? And we can talk about other things. There's all mm. kinds of other things to talk about. Yeah. Do you have anything to that, Karen? I just think I would also say, like, we can talk about this in another episode or at another time about, like, there are good, like, boundaries to have in place with certain friends. But I also hope that, like, we would all have people that we disagree with in small things and some bigger things. Because mm-hmm. I think uh, we should always be learning and maybe, like, <laughs> we're not always right. <laughs> and so, right. and maybe it's not actually about becoming right or figuring out, like, what we're supposed to, where we're supposed to land on all these things. But honestly, for me, in the past, having friends that believe differently than me on a really deep level or just like have different preferences from me, they've helped expand my like view of things. It's helped just give me a different perspective and like learning someone's story and hearing like, oh, like I still don't agree, but I know your story and I see that like how you've gotten to kind of where you land on these things. And I bet it would be really hard like not to land there or that kind of makes sense or maybe it doesn't make sense and I respect you Mm -hmm. and maybe like that's actually the point is not getting to be like you're right or I'm right but just do we respect people enough Mm -hmm. and I think we get a lot out of like relationships where we're pushed and stretched and challenged even if our mind never changes right I think there was a Greek philosopher I don't know if it was Aristotle or, or whoever but he talked about in an argument do we want to win or do we want truth to prevail? Mm. And I think that's a big question because I think a lot of times, and and I think Christians once again we're so bad at this. We want to win. Yeah, we want to have we want to have that zinger, that one liner that'll that'll shut people up. And what we've done is we've shut the door of the gospel to the to other people who disagree with us when we do that. Yeah, but when we want truth to prevail, when we want truth to be known, now all of a sudden. My heart's different in an agree and in, in a disagreement with someone. It's not, man. I want to shut them down. It's I want them to come to know the truth. Yeah. So um, let's just. I my friend and I we got in a big fight, and my friend is no longer talking to me. My friend wants nothing to do with me. My friend has said, "Hey, we're I, I'm done with you." Like what? They don't want to talk to me, and I don't really want to talk to them. But I'm hearing you guys say like this is a good thing. Try and work through it. So like, what do I do in this situation? Like, if they if they don't want to talk to me, do I then go provide more conflict to try and fix it? Or like we're in this disagreement over whatever it may be. So what do I do? Uh, that that goes back to what I was talking about with the D groups. It, it's that's what we see so many times is it's all of a sudden there's this conflict and all of a sudden the D group breaks up and nobody wants to talk to each other. And then a leader will come to me and go, what do I do? I go, well, here's the thing. The Bible tells us Mm -hmm. as much as it has to do with you, be at peace with all people. Mm -hmm. And I think that is huge for us to understand that I need to do whatever I can to make it right. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, if they don't forgive me, if they don't, if they don't want to come, you know, and and meet in in the middle and, and say, hey, we can agree to disagree. What is it? What is What did you say? ATD. ATD. Yeah. I like if, that. I, I do like that. Um, but if if they don't want, I I can't force them to forgive me. I can't force them to you know to make things right. Make things right. But what I can do is go. I did everything I could to heal this relationship. I do, mm-hmm. and I, and I think Corinne said something a minute ago about respect. You know, I man, I can I can respect that we disagree, but I have to do everything I can to heal this relationship. Mm-hmm. Now they may go. I don't want to have anything to do with you. We're done. Well, then you can you can sleep well at night. You can yeah. go, hey, I I did everything I could to make peace. I apologized. I I did this. Now I, I can't do anything more. Yeah. And so yeah, you don't go looking for a fight, right? Um, but you do as much as you can to go. Hey, let's let's try to fix this. Let's be able to go. Hey, we won't talk about that anymore because we're we're both on different sides and it causes problems. But but man, let's let's do what we can to to be at peace with one another. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like how <laughs> we pursue that peace is really important. We could probably have a whole episode on like apologizing, mm. and like this is not, hey, I'm sorry if that made you mad, or <laughs> I'm sorry if you were offended by that. <laughs> That's not apologizing. <laughs> yes, yeah. that is saying the words I'm sorry. But when we attach like 
I mean, if. And then it's like, okay, so you're not actually sorry. You're just like, in case you're mad at me. And then it does beg the question of like, are you actually broken over you might have broken trust with this person. You might have disrespected this person. You might have hurt someone that God deeply loves, and so do we. Mm. Or are you sorry that they're mad at you and that you don't look like as good of a person as you were going for? Because I know that in my case, sometimes I'm like, I'm sorry, please like restore the image that you have of me, not, yeah. gosh, like I messed up. Yeah. And that's where like... And that's what I had looked up was Hebrews twelve fourteen was work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. And thankfully, if we're in Jesus, we have the blood of Jesus that atones for us. And so we have this opportunity to be holy and to be with the Lord. Yeah. But what does it mean to work at living in peace with everyone? It doesn't mean achieve peace where everyone agrees and we're like, yay, right. now we're all good. But if we pursue, like Shane said, to as much as we can control, but it requires like actual humility, not just like following the script of, hey, I'm sorry. Okay, please forgive me. I'm sorry if you were hurt check, move on. It's like, well, I did what I could. And it's like, did we? <laughs> and so having like, I guess, good accountability too, where it's not gossip. So this is not like your friend, like, Hey, I said it this way. Don't you think like I'm fine? It, but it's having like the D group leader or the pastor or someone that you can go to, to say like, here's kind of my plan for how I'm going to seek peace and having someone hold you accountable to, did you follow through with that? And yeah. then they can help, you know, like, here's what I did. And I actually apologized and if they still choose to be mad, that wasn't ever like the command. It was to pursue peace. Yeah. And it's to then, if they say no, we go on. We don't badmouth that person. We don't bash them and say, forget this. We don't carry bitterness and resentment. We genuinely forgive. We don't have to forget about it, but we can move on knowing yeah. I did what I was supposed to do, but I also don't hold this against this person. <laughs> you know, I, I love that because that's, that's what happens sometimes is – People will try to pursue peace. It won't work. And then all of a sudden, they become the martyr for peace. I've done everything I can. <laughs> no peace. <laughs> they, they will not. Do, you know, I'm like, no, that's you missed it. If you are bragging about you trying to do all you can, then what you're doing is you're putting that person down. You're No, at the end of the day, it's, man, I've done everything I can. Now I, I need to pray. I need to, but I don't need to talk about that person. Yeah. Um, and you're right. I, there might need to be one on apologies because that's. Yeah. I, I think so many times, especially in the church world, it's almost like when my kids fight, and I'm like, "All right, say say you're sorry, sorry, sorry," and then they both walk away just mumbling, you know. And that's that's what a lot of we a lot of times we do yeah. in the church world yeah. is it's I'm sorry because if I don't say I'm sorry. I won't have that image, or I won't get to be around the people I want yep. to be around. Mm. And really, it's not, no, it's restoration. Yeah. Um, and that's what God desires. God desires restoration. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Do you guys, either one of y'all, have anything else you want to share? I that feel was, like. Go ahead. No. That was short. Yeah. Is that, are we done? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I definitely think we could like follow back up with this. Oh, we will. We I will. think <laughs> the biggest thing, too, like as you go about your week, is maybe think about. Am I trying to keep the peace? Am I trying to like put a Band-Aid over it and be mm. like, everything's great, but on the inside, I'm raging with fire? <laughs> or are we trying to like actually be peacemakers that genuinely pursue peace, not just clean it up and like, okay, I'm sorry, or can we like just move on? And then I actually have this pile under my rug where I'm like, oh, I, this is going to be great to use later. Or yeah. are we seeking to like pursue that peace? Yeah, for sure. That's good. And I, and I think I think just in what I have to say is don't fear conflict. Mm -hmm. Don't don't run from it. Now, you don't have to embrace it like I do. <laughs> but 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 don't fear it because life is full of conflict. Yeah. Learning how to deal with conflict mm -hmm. is what we need to be better at as Christians. Right. Yeah. I've regretted sometimes how I've handled conflict, but I've never regretted having the conversation yes. like I've never gotten through being like that was such a waste of time yeah. like restoration is always better yes. than yeah. resentment no that's good that's good well thank you guys for listening uh we will definitely continue the conversation about conflict because it's just I mean it's needed um and so if you guys want to join the conversation all you have to do is text Tuesday to 98173 
uh, to get a form to be able to ask your question. Um, you won't have to give us any information besides the city state you live in and uh, the grade that you're in. Um, but we want you guys to feel safe and, and comfortable uh, asking your questions because we want to ask them um, and, and we want to talk through them no matter how heavy they may be. Uh, so please join the conversation. Just text Tuesday to 98173. Um, and so thank you guys so much for listening or watching and we will talk to y'all next week. See ya.